hello, and welcome to Getting a Grip on It, the, the show where I show you how to put handles on tools even though I'm a blacksmith and not a woodworker, but besides the point. <laughs> uh, where to begin? So a little while ago, I had my general forging hammer, the head cracked. <laughs> so I needed to make another one because this one is now toast. I don't know, it, what, the, what, what do you want me to tell you? This is just my method for putting on a handle. So let's, let's roll that, that beautiful bean footage. So I have roughed out a hammer blank, or a handle blank. It's wider than it needs to be right now, which is okay. So now I need to fit the head to the handle. So what that entails is scribing out the bottom of this oval onto the head. So now I just need to remove all this stuff. Okay. All right, so let's start removing that material. Here we go. So you can tell that it is now fit up. And look at that, just like that, I'm done. I have a brand new hammer ready to go and I can get back to forging again, so that's awesome. I now need to sculpt this. I need to thin this out a whole lot. I need to thin this out a whole lot and make it look like a nice hammer handle. So I'll, now we'll cut to a time lapse of, of me of me doing all of that that. Okay. Here, here comes the time lapse. You may have also noticed that I put newspaper on my vice jaws because I want to preserve the wood as best I can. So it's nice wood and we want to keep it nice. So yeah, I don't know. Well, I'll, I'll do the time lapse. Two hours later. Okay, as you can probably tell by all this Cheeto dust everywhere, that this thing got a whole lot different. It's now officially dark out, so. Here we go, sculpting montage. The next day. Little update. I scraped the handle and sculpted it and it's starting to look pretty pretty good. I'm I'm quite pleased with that. So now is the point where I need to drive a wedge into there. I'm going to I have this chunk of walnut. I think that will be suitable. I'm sure everybody's gonna be mad that I'm using a walnut wedge on an Osage orange handle, but I don't care. The way I learned it was that the the wedge material should be as hard as the handle material, if not harder. So, I don't know. Mind your business, how about that? So I'm gonna make myself a wedge. Using my open L saw that has the broken nose. I'm no woodworker, but this gets me where I need to go. That only took about forever. So, I'm gonna make this into a wedge. I'm just gonna rasp down one end into a triangle. So we're starting to get that wedge shape. Oops. Okay, we got a wedge. It doesn't have to be exact. This is kind of a rough, rough science to me. And I don't, I don't know anything about woodworking because I'm a blacksmith, but when I do have to make a handle, I usually use woods that are hard enough. <clears throat> okay, so now, the handle is sanded to about 220 grit. And now I'm gonna show you a trick that all the old heads probably know. So this is just a cup of water and I'm just gonna brush this on. So now I'm gonna let this dry. Once it dries, it's going to raise the grain. Actually here, let's, let's come outside. <clears throat> So 
So now we're outside at the crackhead, I don't know, fireplace. So this is a bucket of warm sand that I'll be using later, but I'm gonna, wow, that grain looks really good now. So I'm gonna let it sit in there for a little bit. Yeah, now you can, now you can really see it. It looks like shit out here, dude. But I'm raising the grain and then I'll sand that down when I go to the higher grit. So I'm about to take it to 400 and sand it and then it'll be ready to handle. I'm also going to cut a slice in the top here for our wedge to go in and then we'll get this bad boy all ready to be assembled. I also need to do some other stuff like round the bottom of this. This is too sharp and it's not square. So I'm gonna fix that and kind of get it ready to for its final assembly. Hey, that looks pretty good. So meanwhile, back at the crackhead fireplace, using that bucket of warm sand you saw me heating up earlier, I tuck in the hammerhead and the handle and the wedge all in this warm bucket of sand. The idea here is that you can eliminate some excess moisture in the wood and make sure it's really nice and dry for final assembly by putting it in a bucket of warm sand. This was my first attempt at it. I've never done that before, but I'm. I, it seems to be working, I don't know. I then use tight bond to apply to the wedge on either side, just a light coating. I like to call this cheap insurance. And after driving the wedge down as far as it'll go, I trim off the excess using a saw and then I rasp the remainder that was sticking out until it's flush. And then my favorite part, which is applying a finish. And I like to use tongue oil as a finisher. I find I get really good results. And y'all, let me tell you about this wood. This is Osage Orange and it is in its purest form in my opinion. I am so stoked with how this came out. It looks so immaculate, especially when I initially put this finish on. I'm just so in love with it. This is the hammer after about a month of heavy use and I can't be more stoked with how this came out. It's a pleasure to use. It feels good to have a hammer that is very personal to me. I've never really had one that I not only made the head for, but made the handle for. And I think it's a unique item that makes using it every day even more fun. So if you're new here, my name is Nate and I am a metalsmith. I plan on showing you all more about metalworking, more about blacksmithing and my metal working practice. If you want to follow along, make sure you do all of the, the cringe things that YouTubers always be begging for. I'll put a link to, to my website where I have classes and you can buy some stuff that I've made and you can learn more about me and you can even help support me through things like Patreon. So, okay, uh, I'll see you in the next one. Okay, bye.